William Burns is from Arkansas. He did an MFA at the New School and is currently doing a PhD in fiction writing. Um, he has a pretty uh, healthy fear of spiders, um, random needles, uh, and Taco Bell. Um, he'd say he fears all three equally, uh, with Taco Bell being because it uses grade a, uh, D meat, and the only other place apparently where you can get grade D meat is in prison. So uh, with that, I have William Burns. I feel like I'm being recorded. I don't have a name for this, so I'm going to call it Houston. It's so hot, the rattlesnakes wear bikinis, and you could squeeze sweat from a fingernail. Sometimes the heat just makes you feel bad, guilty for no reason. Tonight, you may have a reason. Take a deep breath and touch your neck. It feels like a sticker burr is lodged in your throat, and you can't inhale fully anymore. You forget what it was like, being young with new lungs, thinking you'd go straight from elementary school to the NBA. Your mother is sitting at the foot of your bed the way she'd do rainy mornings, singing to you, Wake up, you sleepy head, get up, get out of bed, see how the sun is shining. The dog is in a 30-gallon hefty bag, suffering. The moon is a fifth of volume. There are so many stars out, it looks like the sky is having an allergic reaction to what you're doing, and you're one bad decision away from shooting your lips clean off your face. You don't blow your mouth off because you miss Haley. Those thick red lips caked in Carmex. She'll soon have a restraining order on you because you fucked up and stalked her. Not to murder her, heavens no. You stalked her so you could have enough to talk about on your first date. But you have a bad memory, so you took notes. She found them. You know too much about restraining orders to think you'll ever share blood again. She told you Carmex cuts your lips with fiberglass to moisturize them, and that's how you get addicted. The day after, you thought about her bleeding into your mouth, and you ran out and bought a tube at the come and go. You put on seven layers, smacked your sticky lips, and immediately thought of the future. Equity, strollers, slip and slides. But here you are. There's a Scottish terrier dying in a garbage bag, and it's 60% your fault. Stand up and move your toes, tell them it's time to go. You've got a lot to do today. You miss how Haley felt when you held her. Denser than she looked, like a good lemon. You may have an STD, but from a woman like Haley, herpes would be a souvenir. Here's the thing, you fucked up again. You insisted on buying a pound of weed from a guy named Crazy Chris, a guy with one permanently dilated pupil, and he ran off with 3,500. Now his dog is dying in the middle of your floor in a 30-gallon hefty bag. Haley's on birth control. She has a stripper pole in her room. Stop thinking about her. Focus. It's hot in here and each breath feels like a punch in the throat. The bag looks slick in the twilight, looks like spoiled Burger King meat. And the worst part, you just realize it's moving, slowly up and down, and you hear it, wheezing. You're the only one not on morphine, so it's on you to kill it. Before you kill it, lighten the mood, even though you may be having your first outbreak. Try not to picture yourself in a Valtrex commercial, walking on a beach too cold for swimming with a kind-hearted new partner who doesn't have herpes, yet. Think about your friend whose money you lost. Look at him. His chin and neck connect more than usual, like one of the voices in his head spoke too loud tonight and his face had an avalanche. He's higher than God's dandruff, and he's lost a lot of blood, so he's catatonic. He paralyzed the dog when you were breaking into Crazy Chris's house. You think he's trying to make you feel like a bad person by out catatonicing you. He's not. It is, after all, 60% your fault. It's not a good time for a joke, but you crack one anyway. You say, we're like the mighty morphine Power Rangers. And he puts his face in his hands and cries. The money's gone, and now he'll never get that facelift he wanted. Crazy Chris is the only person you know who's been to prison, and he didn't get there by talking loud in church. Here's what happened today. He robbed you, and you robbed him back, even though a friend told you not to retaliate. 
Your friend said, call the cops, be ready to take it as a loss, and move on, but please don't hit him. Don't hit him because he'll hit you back, hard. Get up and peel off your bloody wife beater. It smells like a Big Mac. Put a hand on the dog's rib cage. The breaths, whispers. Do the humane thing. Tie the bag as tight as possible. Don't think about how the dog looked when your partner shut the window on its neck. The inch-deep indentations, the bloodshot eyes, the gurgling red sound. When an animal panics, it looks like it's laughing. You wish you didn't know that. A few years ago, your greatest concern was the breakout. Now you're worried about outbreaks, but you gotta bump the rash down in your worry priority list. Are you dreaming? You're dreaming. Don't go back to sleep. Wake up, wake up. The lullaby used to annoy you. You wish you could hear it again. You'd smoke a bowl of black mold if you could share blood with Haley one last time, if you could go back and keep her from discovering things. Had you been stalking her for an entire year, how, when you first saw her at the free clinic, you didn't talk to her because you didn't know what to say. As you take away the dog's last breaths, you wonder if he's thinking about that bony buried in the backyard that some other dog will find. Your phone buzzes, and you don't have to look. You know who it is. Pinch the bag around the dog's head, hold it tight at the base of his neck, and remember that if he hadn't bit your friend, he wouldn't be about to lose his life to a 50-cent garbage bag. This is a creature with jaws like a T-Rex, who couldn't be better armed to protect himself. It's like watching a tapeworm take down a tank. It doesn't feel right. It feels like somebody somewhere cheated. Your phone buzzes again, and when the dog stops breathing, you answer it. There's a chance Crazy Chris doesn't know it was you. Just remember to breathe, and don't let your voice shake. Thank you.